Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at reading text files in Java. And in fact I'm going to show you the simplest possible way to read a text file line by line in this tutorial. And in a future tutorial we'll look at um, a more complex but perhaps more flexible way of doing this. So um, I'm first, the first thing I need is some file that I want to read and I've created this file here and it's got a bunch of um, lines in it, just random text basically. And I need to find that file on my disk for start so that I know to tell Java where to read it from. And I've saved this file on my desktop. So if I look at my desktop here, here's my file. And I'm just going to right click it and on Windows you go to properties. And I think on the Mac there's a info, get info option or something like that. And I'm just going to copy this path to the file here. And now in Eclipse I'm going to create a string, string and I'll call it file name and I'll set that equal to the path of this file followed by the name of the file which is example.text like that. Now if you're on Windows here you'll have a little problem at this stage Whoops. because um, the uh, within double quotes in Java if you have a slash, a backslash like that, this is called, then uh, a backslash followed by a letter indicates a special, uh, often non-printing character within double quotes. For example, backslash n means new line. So um, this is um, complaining because it thinks that this, for example, that backslash e should be some kind of special control sequence. And to get around that, you can either backslash the backslashes by saying, uh, by just having two backslashes where you'd normally use one. Just put an extra backslash in and then this will be interpreted um, as if it really was a backslash. Or the other option, which is um, also a good option if you're not working on Windows, but another system that uses forward slashes, is just use forward slashes instead of backslashes there. And that will work just fine on Windows as well. Or at least it does on my system. So let's replace all these backslashes with forward slashes. And um, now the next step here is to create a file object which will actually be the kind of Java representation of your file. So I'll say file, let's call it uh, text file equals new file and I'll pass it the file name that I want it to work with like this. And I'll add the import with control shift O and just save that. And once you've got your file object um, now, the kind of more traditional way of reading a file in object, uh, reading a file in Java, involves uh, classes like buffered uh, reader and file reader and that sort of thing. But a slightly simpler way to do it is to use the scanner class. So I'm going to say scanner. Let's call this. I'll just call it in actually equals new scanner, and I'll pass that the file object that I want to read. And let's add the import for scanner with control shift O. And this will give me a error because it throws an exception. And if I just click this, I could surround it with try catch. And I could put all my code in this try. And then if this file not found exception is thrown, here I could put sys out can't find file plus file name, something like that. Can't file not found or something like that. But instead of doing that here, um, just to keep this code a bit cleaner, I'm just going to throw this declaration. I'm going to throw the um, exception out of my main method. So if I do that, if it can't find the file, my main program will just kind of stop with a file not found exception. Um, and just to demonstrate that, let's just change the name of the file and just run it. And here I've got a file not found exception being thrown from my main program. Okay, so um, I'll change that back and then when, when you open the scanner by doing this, um, you should always remember to close it and that's what that warning there is about. It says uh, the value of the local variable oh, is not used, that's one thing, but then resource leak in is never closed. So um, I'm just going to close the scanner and say in.close and I'm saying in because that's what I happen to call my scanner and that will close the underlying file on your system. And now we can read this line by line. And you can read data from your file 
using um, a variety of methods from the scanner object. If I type in dot next here, you can read you can read integers and um, or floats and all kinds of things from your file. But what I'm going to do here for the moment is just have a loop that will read the whole file line by line. And I'm going to say while in, which is my scanner, has next line. So in other words, while there isn't another line to read, then I'm going to say string line equals in dot next line. Next line like that. And uh, no matter what you're planning to do with this text from your file, it's a good idea at this point to just do a sysout and output the line to check that your file actually can be read. So I'm just going to run this and here in the console down here you can see the contents of my file. Now if you work with, if you want to work with the other methods of scanner and read integers from your file, for example a common thing to do would be like the first line in your file um, would be let's say a number um, like for example it might be three and that might indicate that you have to read three lines from your file. Let's just save this. And if you have something like that, you want to read the number and then you want to use a for loop to read three lines. So here, instead of while, you'd have four and um, you'd read next line three times to read the next three lines, for example. And the next three lines could be, um, you know, they could be the names of um, books or something like that, you know, some kind of data. But let's suppose that we want to read the number just for the moment. And um, you would do that by saying int value equals and your scanner variable and then dot next int. And now if I do a sysl, I can say uh, read value and let's output value here. So if I run that, here is my value as an integer that I read from the top of the file and then I'm going on to read all the lines from the file. Now there's a, there's a little complication here which um, you, you couldn't easily notice here but notice that there's a blank line here and the, the problem will become more apparent if I number the lines. So let's say int count and I'll say count equals 2 because um, the first line in my file here um, the first line that I'm reading with next line is going to be this, the second line. Here's the first line, here's the second line. And I'm reading this integer and then in my while loop I'm reading the lines one by one. So this is line two. And let's just say here, let's say uh, red line. Um, in fact, let's just give it a number. Let's say count plus and I'll have a colon and then a plus. So I'm just numbering the lines here and I'll increment count every time I read a line. And now if I, if I run this, you can see, if you look at the console here, you read, we read the numbers successfully and we read the rest of the line successfully, but the problem is that we read a, apparently a blank line in between the two. And yet if I look at my file, there isn't a blank line there, not at that point anyway. And the reason for that is that um, there's actually an invisible character here, which next int doesn't read and next line does read and uh, that character is um, well it depends on your system but it's um, you can call it the new line character and on Windows actually it consists of two invisible characters two bytes in your um, in the underlying code the underlying bytes that this file is made up of and in Windows those characters are called the carriage return and line feed and that's because um, on old style typewriters um, there was like a movable carriage that moved backwards and forwards to print out your text and when you got to the end of, a, of, a, of the line you'd physically move the carriage back to the left so that was called a carriage return moving the carriage back to the left and then you'd turn it to scroll the line and that was called a line feed and now in Windows we have uh, invisible characters the carriage return and line feed and when you call next in, um, whether you've got two invisible characters or one, this will not read it. It only reads purely the actual integer itself. So it's reading this integer, but it's not reading the invisible character that actually causes the new line to appear here. 
Um, so what we need to do to make this work is I just need to read that character and discard it. Now I need to say, after reading an integer, I need to say in dot next line. And that will read my um, carriage return and line feed. It will read my new line character. And now if I run this, um, everything looks great. And I've got red value three. And now I've got the, the lines being numbered starting at line two. Uh, I think there's just one more thing that I want to show you in this tutorial, and that's um, sometimes you don't want to read a file from an absolute path. Sometimes you want to put like a file actually in your project folder, and you can do that. So if I um, go to uh, my desktop here where I created the file, I can drag it into my project folder here and say copy files, and let's just maximize Eclipse again. And it's important that this file should be in the root directory of your project because that's actually the working directory of your Java program when you click the run button here. And that's where it will read files from if you don't specify an absolute path. And I'm going to just comment this out here. And let's just copy that. And instead of having the full path, I'll just have the name of the file and it will now read from here. So uh, just to prove that it's reading this file, let's double click this, open it in Eclipse, and let's add Zebra on the bottom here. So I'll change it a little bit. And now if I run this, it will read from the working directory. And you can see there is Zebra at line 11 down there. OK, so that's it for this tutorial. And um, this code is going to be on caveofprogramming.com. And you can also find uh, more courses on, um, that's a free course on multithreading and uh, stuff on Java collections and Android programming, uh, web Java web programming and also a big course on swing programming and there's some paid, some of these are paid courses but uh, most of them have um, free videos that you can also see for free in any case even if they are paid courses so take a look at uh, www.caveofprogramming.com and until next time happy coding Thank you.